Okay, in this tutorial I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of Enscape. So Enscape is a plugin which uh, you can get from uh, Enscape3D.com and this is for rendering directly within Revit. Um, it's really quite easy to use. So in this tutorial I'm just going to have a quick look at some of the functionality that you can use. Um, so that's again Enscape3D.com so download and install is fairly straightforward. So um, once you've downloaded and installed, it puts a new tab up on your bar there. So you have Enscape. And you have to start it from a particular 3D view. So um, by default, the model opened on this one. So what I'll do is I'll open it up in here. So uh, from the parking area. And then we hit Start on that. So this will start up Enscape. And this is what you get. So it let's take... Uh, a moment to load up. And there we go. So uh, once you're in here, you uh, the controls are put up directly in front of you there. So you can look around with the mouse and you can obviously move through the space as well. So uh, WASD, kind of standard game configuration, or you can use um, the arrow keys on your keyboard. So it has two main modes um, walk through and fly through. So space will toggle those. So now I'm on walk through mode. Um, so I can still look around but obviously it's going to find the, a few issues there. I can't walk through the building for instance. So you need to find things like doors. So space, I tend to use fly through the most anyway. I quite quite like that. Um, while I'm outside the building, it's a good time to show you some of the other things that we have in here. So, for instance, if you look here, we can change the time of the day by right-clicking and pressing Shift. So, that's it. And you can see here, as I move across, you'll see the shadows change in this region here. So, just changing the time of the day uh, across the building. And that can have quite a dramatic effect uh, inside and outside. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Uh, let's go find a space. So I'm in fly-through mode here. Just like that. And just running into the building. So let's find a bit of space in here. There we go. Now, um, okay, so that's a fairly decent spot there. Now, um, Looking again, look around on that, or you can orbit using right click. So, if I want to orbit this space like that, I can. So, if you want to climb up, actually using the combination of orbit and looking around tends to be quite effective. Now, the screen at the moment is um, well, it's not rendering terribly well. Um, that's just in the real time mode. When you hit the screenshot, uh, it comes out really, really well. Anyway, um, so that's the, the basic controls. Now we also have a map in here, so if you hit the M button, uh, it'll put a map up. And this is us here, so if I just move around for a moment, you can see how I'm tracking through the space. So that can be quite useful if you get lost in a building. Um, now, first one, our first thing to do is we can just create a simple screenshot. So if I hit uh, screenshot to file here, um, like so, it's going to ask prompt me for a location to save it, so I'll hit save on that. And it's working away in the background. So if I just come back in here, uh, just get the Enscape back up. So it currently says exporting screenshot. So I'm going to pause that while this is going on. Um, it takes a wee bit of time for it to do it. It's not terribly long, but the I'm currently recording the screen and everything else. So it's just adding a bit of load to it, so it's going to pause for a moment. Okay, so it's just finishing up uh, that screenshot now. So that's it, it'll clean up that in a second. Um, so we have a quick look in here. That's my screenshot. So let's just open with photos here. So that's the, oops, get rid of that. That is the uh, image it's just created, uh, just from that view. So when you're creating your renderings, all you really do is you run around to a position 
uh, that you want to view, hit um, the button there to create the screenshot, and that's your render. Um, so these are just a couple of other ones that I've just done earlier uh, when I was just playing about with it. So it's really quite, uh, it's quite good. Uh, very, very quick and easy to use. So all the things you can do in here, um, you can export to an exe file. So in that case there, if I, when you click on this thing here, it'll create a standalone exe file of your uh, model. So I'm just going to throw this one on the desktop. Um, let's click save. And that's working away there in the background. And what that'll do is, as I said, create a standalone. Now you do need to have a graphics card for both Enscape and for the, um, the uh, exported file. So let's click OK on that back in here and there we go. So that's my Enscape exe file here. So if I double click on this just to launch it, you get a starting view from parking area. So we'll see where it actually starts. So it started where I created it from and I've got uh, all the same controls. So uh, there you go, just move around the building as before. All right, so yeah, let's close that down now. Um, so this was oddly enough uh, looks exactly the same as uh, the portal, which works in Revit. Okay, so if you give it a little bit more time, it tends to beef up the render quality. Now I'm just going to fly down here uh, into another open space. And what I'm going to do is show you some of the other things you have in here. So um, let's move maybe maybe about here. Now, um, so screenshot the file, export to XE. Uh, you can create views. So if I wanted to create a camera view in Revit, just hit that button. The thing you can do is create animations. So if I wanted to do an animation, say from, let's see, uh, just come over here, for instance. Um, you just set a camera path, so set your start position. So that was my start position that I just left. Uh, come over to the other side here, like that. And then I can set a stop position. And what it'll do when you hit this button is it'll create a video of that sequence. So just transitioning from there to there. So that can be quite useful as well. Uh, it's nice and easy to use. Uh, we can do panoramas and things like that, so your 360s will pop in there. Some of the stuff I want to show you now, though, are is under the settings. So let's see. Um, sorry, it's orbiting up a little bit more and just changing. There we go. So under settings here, there's a couple of things that we can play with. Um, so we can do paper models. Um, if I just click on that one, for instance and flick back in here. So I'm going to try and keep uh, it's a bit normally if you're running dual screens this is a lot easier to do. Um, so that's paper, yeah that's white mode there. Uh, you can see that it's just changed out the materials that can be quite useful. Um, let's see polystyrol that's just refreshing there as well. Um, we also have a light view in here which I really particularly like. And this will give you a range in values of lux there, as you can see. So you can see what kind of light levels are hitting your building. And indeed, um, you can change the time of day as you want. So I'm just moving the time of day there as you go through it. And these will render out exactly the same way as well. So if you hit um, the save up there, it'll do that. Uh, Auto exposure is there, so if you want, if you're not happy with how it's exposing it, you can change all that to suit. Uh, I tend to leave it on. You can do depth of field, um, all of the kind of stuff that you'd expect to see. So image, um, you can set the image properties in here. We also have atmospherics if you so desire. So um, depending on what you want to put in the background, it's all there as well. Um, yeah, just mouse movement and things like that. So for the most part, it's um, it's an extremely useful and very easy to use application. So uh, have fun with it. 
Thanks for watching.